What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hicker Scuba and Marina. If you are new to our channel, click right up here above Tessa's head and click that little subscribe button. Ding that little bell as well. That way you guys will be notified every time we upload new content. Now I'm taking my daughter out today to do a little bit of diving, but not just diving for fun. We're actually doing a work job today. We're going out to do a search and recovery dive and we're going to be doing a dock cleanup or a lake cleanup. And basically what we got to do is swim around a lady's dock, clean up all the trash, get all the hazards out because her kids and her grandkids use her dock for swimming here on our lake and she wants it clean and safe for them to use. So I'm going to take Tessa out. She's also lost some stuff in the water. So Tessa's going to do a quick search and recovery job for the lady. And then of course we'll do some cleanup as well. But I'll walk you through exactly what we do during the cleanup, what items we actually bring out, what items we're going to leave in the lake. A lot of times if there's debris and trees and stuff like that, we don't actually pull them out. We're going to leave them in for fish habitats. We just drag them away from the dock where somebody can't jump on them and get hurt, or we'll take them down to a deeper depth. But trash, bottles, things like that that people could uh, step on, hurt themselves, obviously we're going to get those out. we got a little ways up the lake to go here, and then we'll jump in and get started. look at what's around the dock and clean up if there's anything that needs to be cleaned up and let me bring it i've got an umbrella stand i know that's down over here so i just want uh, it, the wind knocked it over we were fishing and just knocked it right on over i got the umbrella out but i couldn't the, the other one sunk it's too heavy so that's all that i know of that's down there so I so how far off the end of your dock do the kids run and jump and all that? Oh, just, just so we know how far out to go out. I just, I, I wouldn't go any further than that dock. The end of that yeah. dock? Okay. I just kind of want to know what's all around this gotcha. area between me and the other one. And, then, and, and the good news is point. the back of your dock, according to my sonar right now, is 10 foot. Yeah. It's so yeah. if it's they a, were to jump in, as long as it didn't come up to about an 8 foot level, it should be good yeah, to go. Yeah, it should be good, yeah. Well, are you ready, Tessa? <laughs> right. You want to pet the dogs, don't you? Yeah, you can pet them. You can pet. Well. Call them over. Come here, Bonnie. Come here, girl. They're, they're very friendly. Darla yeah. doesn't like you to pet her top of her head because that's her breed. But you can pet her underneath her chin. Come here, Bonnie. She might have jumped. <laughs> I think Bonnie jumped on the mat. She loves oh, okay. jumping on that float. Come here. Yeah, I'll have to go get on my basis so we can go in it. Darla, they love this thing. <laughs> they love it. Yeah. Get, get in. Get in. I tie this to my bathing suit and then we swim all around the coast. They love it. They love it. And it's nice and cool for them because they, they don't get hot. Isn't that the funniest thing? Now both of them are gonna float away. I know. I know. They just love it. Well, at least they're hooked up. Oh yeah, they're all they're all set. And then I go out there. I'll, I'll go up and get on my bathing suit, and then I'll get in the water with them while y'all were doing this. How about that? Sounds good. When we get done, you can jump up on there. How's yeah, that? You, you, you can play on. Yeah, yeah, she's going right ahead. <laughs> come on, let's go clean up, then we'll do it. Yeah. Oh, look, we even got us a ladder to come back up right oh, there. Oh, yeah, it's yeah. a nice ladder. Awesome. It's a nice ladder. All right, time to get down to the diving. As you can see, Tess is just doing her standard rollback entry here. She has actually come to love this entry method. Um, for me personally, I'm just going to do a controlled seated entry here. Uh, she's kind of short enough that she could have uh, very easily went in without getting hurt. Uh, it's very shallow here, so I'm to try to it but once we get in, we're going to kind of get our wits about us and go ahead and get her light turned on, give her some final last instructions on how we're going to conduct the dive, and then we are going to descend down. The first thing we're going to do is we are going to look for um, the umbrella stand that our client had asked us to look for. 
And it looks like it's very, very stingy here, and it is, and it's because there's so much debris down there, so many leaves and stuff. But it does clear up for us. As you can see, we come right across the umbrella stand here. It's a very quick, easy find. It was right where the client said it was at. But as we pull it up out of the seal, you can see it doesn't take much at all to stir up the visibility. And when you do stuff like this, your buoyancy control is, is key to being successful here because if you stir up the visibility too much, you're not going to see nothing. You're not even going to see entanglement hazards um, as you're swimming around and looking for debris and garbage and stuff like that. But we're going to go ahead and get this thing put back up on the dock so that we don't have to come back after it later. And we are just, you know, at the beginning of the dive, so we still got the rest of the dive to clean up and things like that. But our goal here is to swim down the um, incline here until we reach the end of the dock. Um, and we'll probably go about four or five feet out past the dock, whatever a kid could run and jump. And the way that we know we've reached the end, of course, is by the shadow. So we can use the shadow of the dock that's coming down on top of us. When we no longer see a shadow, we know that we've swam out past it. But here you'll see we just start coming across all different things here. I think I found a shoe uh, of all things. We found a shoe here. Uh, little stuff like this, uh, We sometimes we'll get out and we'll just trash it. Sometimes we just leave it down there. If it's not really a hazard to a swimmer or something like that, we're just going to leave it in place. But here I come across a bucket. Uh, and you'll notice every so often uh, I'll check the depth. So if I find something that may be a concern, a branch, or maybe a stump or something like that. I'll look at my computer real quick, just see how deep I am. Because if it's deep enough that somebody can't dive in and hit it with their head or their feet or something like that, then I'm just going to leave it be and just let it lay. But here we're just picking up some trash and debris. That's a top of a battery box there. I also picked up a five-gallon bucket. Um, there we're swimming across some branches. Um, and some, like I said, some I'll pick up. Some, of course, I will just check the depth on and see where we're at. Um, and, of course, I'm trying to guide test it too. So here we come across another branch. And we're going to go ahead and actually swim it back out into deeper water. Um, and the reason we're moving this, we're still in about eight foot of water here, but that branch sticks up another foot to two foot, and it's got fishing line wrapped in it, it's got lures, and if a kid jumps in, they could actually get entangled in that, or they could get, you know, hooked with the fishing lure. So we're just going to swim this down, I think I'd take it down to a depth of about 15 feet real quick, and just get rid of it out in front of the dock area, and then will swim back up along the dock and just continue to pick up the booty and trash. And I have edited this video. You can't tell it's in little segments here because there was a lot that we didn't find simply because their, their dock area was actually fairly clean. So we didn't have a lot to actually pick up. But here we're coming across a big stump. And you'll notice here in just a second, I'm looking at my computer just to see how deep it is. The bottom of the stump here is about 10 foot. The top of the stump is about 8 foot. And this is going to be a concern. Now, obviously, we can't remove this stump. But one thing that we can do is mark it for the client. So what we're going to do is put an SMB on it. We're going to shoot it up to the surface. Once we get done with the client, we can kind of tell the client, hey, that buoy that we just shot to the surface, that is a large stump that's probably about two and a half foot across and about two foot tall. And she needs to know that so that if her kids are jumping off the dock, they don't jump in that area. Now, at the end of the video, one of the things that you're going to notice is we're actually going to go back down with another buoy system. And we're just using a fender off a boat. And we're going to take a rope and go down and tie off that fender to the stump itself but I'm just marking it temporarily until we can finish our cleanup job and then we'll go back and like I said marking it's just going to let them know hey there's a hazard here do not let your kids jump right here um, and it just keeps everybody safe but to start with uh, marking this all I'm doing is just wrapping my reel around it I've already shot the buoy up to the surface and then of course I'm going to clip off here just to uh, keep it secure until I can get a rope and a, a fender or another buoy system on it. Now, one thing that you'll notice as I do tie up the buoy at the end of the video, I don't actually wrap around the stump um, with the rope like I am my line here. I'm actually going to go through the bottom all the way through the roots and bring it back up, and that way it's a single point, and there's no risk of that rope actually coming up. But we're going to move on up. Here you can see Tessa has actually come across a fishing rod. And so we're going to go ahead and get that up. 
I think right now we're in about six foot of water, so that's definitely a concern that I want to get up. You know, kids can swim down there, get entangled in fishing rod and things like that. And this fishing rod ended up still being good. Just wash it out and it'd still work. But um, we're going to continue on with the search here and just see what else that we can find. Um, we typically around docks you're going to find a lot of debris such as tree limbs branches even full trees that people throw in for like crappy uh, beds and things like that and that's very common but here i come across another tree branch here you can see i simply just looked at my computer to see how deep it was to see if it's concerned i think i'm at a depth of about maybe eight feet here um, and i'm just like i said earlier I'm following the shadow of the dock system to kind of let me know where i'm at and you can see it does get pretty murky down there. You're moving stuff. You're pulling it up out of the seal and stuff. So I'm going to pull this branch along. Now, one thing that you will notice here in a minute, and this is a telltale sign that this was actually put there for a fish bed, is the branch that I've got in my left hand, not the pipe that you see in my right hand, but the branch I've got in my left hand is actually snagged. It's actually got a rope on it. So here in a minute, I'm going to take the pipe that I found. I'm going to give it to Tessa, and I'm going to tell her to hold on to it because we're going to take it up. And I'm going to have to cut this branch free just so that I can get it moved and get it out of the area. Um, one of the tools that I use is a set of shears, which you see there on Tessa's shoulder. Uh, we all, all of our savage guys, carry the EMT shears on our left shoulder. Um, but we also carry different tools as well. And one of the ones I use is the ceramic line cutter from the Mario's XR line. And what I really like about that, it's got two cutting edges. It's got just a standard blade, if you will, to cut line and fishing line and stuff like that. Maybe even cut cave reels. But it also has an adjustment on the other side, which you fix the see, where I can open it up to cut a larger diameter rope which here is exactly what I'm doing. I'm taking that line cutter, I'm going to open up one end of it, and I'm actually cut this rope so I get this branch free. But the ceramic cutter, it's been phenomenal. I actually have it on all my BCs, with the exception of my side mount rigs. I just use the standard line cutter from the Mario's XR line, but it's not the adjustable here. But I can open this up and actually cut larger diameter lines and stuff. And it goes pretty smoothly. As you can see, as I just stick it in there, give it one quick turn, and it cut right through that 3H rope like it was absolutely nothing. But we're going to go ahead and bring some of this stuff up and get rid of it, get some of that trash out of there. And then we are going to go back down and permanently mark that stump for them. So as we bring the uh, pop up, and I believe that's a vacuum hose, to be honest with you, from a boat lift. I think whenever this client's boat lift was installed, this was just the what was left over and the, the dock builder actually just threw it in. But here I'm going to take some rope and as you can see I got just a little fender that you'd put on the side of a boat. We're going to use that as a permanent buoy and all I'm going to do is just secure the rope to it and then we're going to go back down our SMB line and secure the other end of the rope to the stump at the bottom. And like I said we're not actually going to wrap around the stump. We're going to dig out underneath it to where we can expose one of the roots and I'm going to stick the line through the opening of the root there just so it's a permanent line if we did wrap it around the stump a couple of waves would just pull that thing right off i'm not sure i could actually get that rope tight enough all the way around even if i was to tie a, a clove hitch i believe that rope would just slip right off that stump so by going around the, uh, the root of the stump it's going to make it a lot more secure and i'm also going to give it just a little bit of play so as the water comes up it will still be a taut line and i'm actually putting kind of a, a slip in it so if the water comes up the buoy is going to go up with it and it's going to tighten the line if the water goes down that slip's going to slide up the line as well keeping it taut the whole time of course before i attach the line to it i'm going to have to uh, remove our smb and reel from the stump itself and i'm just going to take my time here since we are dealing with some murkier water i want to make sure i don't get entangled in our, in our reel here so i'm just going to take my time and wind it up i'm going to get it nice and secured and then of course i'm going to bend it off the test of the line. Um, I'll work with the larger style line. So here she's going to take the reel as well. And I'm going to take the rope. I'm going to go down to the bottom of the stump. And I'm just going to start digging my way down until I can expose a root or a canal up underneath the root so that I can tie off the rope to it. As far as knots and stuff like that, uh, we typically use bow lines for just, or a bow line knot just for practically everything. I like clove hitches if I need something quick to tie off to so it's secure from both sides but a bowline 
really is going to work good in just about any situation. Um, but in this particular situation, I just literally went in doubt, knotted out, and I just tied a bunch of granny knots. Here I'm going to let Tessa cut off all the excess line so that we don't leave it down there. And these shears here from Lifeguard Systems, um, we use these in you know all our BCs as far as what we do underwater work for. And I just uh, put those on her BC. I will be having a video in the future on how we um, attach those to our BC. A lot of people have been asking that in previous videos, and I am going to be making a video on how we do that as well. But as we finish up here, we're going to come up to the top, and uh, we're going to go ahead and finish this guy out, get back on the boat, get all the boat screwed away, and then uh, we're going to do some final thoughts here at the end. Guys, I want to take a quick break from the video real quick and talk about today's sponsor, which is Rios Nautical Eyewear. We absolutely love their glasses. We got an entire display here, and we've been selling out of these. We can't even keep them in stock. You guys have been buying them up left and right from our video, and if you're interested in a pair of these, check out the link below. We have these on our online store, and like I said, it's very difficult for us to keep these in stock because you guys have been buying them up. Our own customer today, or our client that we went out, she had her very own pair, which she got from here, and I'm telling telling you they are spreading like wildfire on our lake these glasses do not sink they float they're very lightweight the lenses are absolutely clearer than glass and to be honest with you they are so lightweight you really truly do not know that you're wearing them so rios thank you again for being a sponsor for our channel you guys rock you're american made company you're out of charleston south carolina and we absolutely love your glasses and i know you guys will as well all right tessa what'd you think it was fun. Was it fun? We get every, everything cleaned up that we should have? Yes. Did we find what we were looking for? Yes. Or what was it? Like a umbrella stand? Yes. Yep, we found that. It's not a flagpole. It's not a flagpole. You're right. It's an umbrella stand. Mm -hmm. So what did you think about that dark water? Did you feel comfortable? I did. The only part is I was like, oh my gosh, where did you go? Because I couldn't see. And then I turned my head and I was like, oh, there he is. Yep. I didn't get nowhere, did I? <laughs> So when, anytime we're in dark water like that, what, what's the key to being comfortable? How do we stay relaxed? What do we got to do? We breathe. We breathe. That's right. We just relax. We breathe through it. And as long as we breathe and relax through it, we can solve any problem, right? Mm hmm Think you did good today? Mm-hmm. Me too. You ready to go eat? Mm-hmm. Let's go eat. Tell everybody bye. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, drop me a like down below and, you know, leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. You think Tessa did a good job? She did, big thumbs up as well. But if you got any questions on anything like this, search and recovery or dock cleanup, leave me a comment down below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. I also want to thank our sponsor once again, Rios Nautical Eyewear. These guys cease to amaze me. Um, I'm telling you, they're the best of the best. And I don't know if you noticed, but the customer that we went out to help today, she was wearing Rios as well. So. Everybody on this lake understands if you're going to be on the lake, you're probably going to lose it. Wear Rios. You ain't going to lose these glasses. But guys, if you did enjoy the video, once again, big like. Definitely share it as well. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Like us on Facebook. Pin us on Pinterest. Subscribe to us here on YouTube. And as always, guys, we appreciate your business.